Hello, everyone, and welcome back to IE E2 E2E, which, of course, is a perfectly straightforward acronym for immersive engineering in episode 2 of Enigmatica 2 Expert Mode. Today, we're going to be using immersive engineering to help complete some of our goals. The first goal is to build more, and this one is going to be here pretty much every single day because we have a long way to go before our base is done. The second goal is to produce some power, which is where IE comes in. And the third goal is to make some cool tools out of Osglow glass. Osglow glass, besides being really fun to say, is the combination of the three mechanism materials. So to get it, we're going to need to get into mechanism too. So I hope you can see what the trajectory for today's episode looks like. Build some rooms to put mods in. Use immersive engineering to create RF. Use RF to power the mechanism machines we need to make some cool tools. Bada bing, bada boom. Before we get into the building though, I thought I'd quickly show you what I've been up to between episodes. I spent some time gathering useful materials, like clay and rubber. I went mining for materials that I knew we'd be needing in bulk, like redstone, iron, osmium, and uranium. I found some cool climbing gloves. I smashed a cow with an anvil. And I got a loot bag, which gave us a stack of cryo-stabilized flux ducts. But now, it's time to move on. Let's build. This hallway is what I spent most of my time working on, and even though it is just a hallway, I'm actually really happy with how it turned out. Because this base is going to have so many hallways, I wanted to make something that was cheap, functional, but still looked pretty, and I think I've succeeded on all three. It's made almost entirely out of stone and cobblestone, and has a good amount of space in these little side nooks for machines, or maybe even compact machines. Additionally, this brownstone here gives us a speed boost when running, and by the time we have thousands of blocks worth of hallways throughout our base, I'm willing to bet that this is going to come in really, really handy. As far as aesthetics, the block is mostly this small brick chiseled stone, but I've broken it up by using the cobblestone variant and the mossy variant and even the reinforced stone variant to really break up the texture and give it some depth. If you look closely, you can even see that I've chiseled out some of the bricks to give this a 3D effect. And I personally really like how it turned out. Only using the moss stone in specific sections gives a great impression of vines that are growing over an old wall. And I think the dark bricks and the cobblestone variant really help to give the stone some detail and make it more lifelike. I know there's probably not many people who care about hallway walls as much as me, but hey, that's what I do. And speaking of places whose walls could use a little bit of help, this right here is our immersive engineering room. As you can see, not a lot of immersive engineering in it right now, but these little sections, 5x3 sections in between the walls, are where our immersive engineering multi-blocks are going to go. Up above, there's this sort of overlook balcony area that you can see, and I made an elevator to teleport up. As you can see, there are four coke ovens over here, which have stopped making cold coke. I guess they're all full. And on the other side is going to be a set of matching blast furnaces to make us our first steel. But speaking of blast furnaces, we're going to have to go to the nether before we can make these, because as you can see, they need both nether bricks and blaze powder. Making a nether portal is as straightforward as always. Let's hope for a good spawn. 
Well, we found our blaze powder. I don't think two blaze rods will be quite enough, but it's good to know that they can spawn anywhere. And it's also good to know that a lot of these nether ores seem pretty common. We have both Ardite and Cobalt. I guess this has the mod that makes the pigmen angry at you if you steal their ores. The pigmen are still mad at me, however. I was only able to get three blaze rods before the amount of pigment started becoming a concern, so we're going to want a way to improve our yield from these. To do so, we're going to make a squeezer. This allows us to put a blaze rod inside, jump on it, and then press it with a button in order to reset it back to full state. And just like that, instead of the usual six blaze powder we would have gotten, we got ten. Combining our blaze powder with our bricks, gives us 30 blast bricks, which is just over the 27 that are required for one blast furnace. Here is our first blast furnace. I'm gonna load it up with a stack of iron and some coal coke, and in about 80 million years, we might have a piece of steel. It does work. However, this is pretty painfully slow, so I'm gonna go kill a few more blazes and be right back. I've got an idea that this is gonna go poorly. We have a 35 blaze powder now. And with our next set of blast bricks here, we can set up our last three furnaces. I'm gonna give them each a stack of iron and coal coke and come back in a while when they're hopefully done processing. But while we wait for all that steel to smelt, we do have a few other tasks that we can be doing. For example, if we wanna power any LB machines, we're going to need these low voltage components. Most of these are easy to make. The wire relay is just copper and hardened clay. The wire connector is, guess what, more copper, more hardened clay. The capacitor needs a couple more materials, but we have all of them to spare. And in fact, I'm going to make two. And by turning some ingots into plates and then cutting them with shears, we can make ourselves some wire coil. Finally, wrapping this around a piece of iron and combining that with some redstone will give us a kinetic dynamo, which is the first way that we can make power. We're also going to use a bunch of our treated wood in order to make water wheel segments. Then we can take these water wheel segments and place them around blocks of steel, which is where it comes in, in order to make water wheels. I'm gonna explain how all of these components come together in just a second, but first, why not open a few loot boxes? Okay, yeah, I'm down for that. Now, let's go ahead and get these water wheels set up so that we can make the first trickles of power. In order to produce any basic power from immersive engineering, you're going to want to have something that moves, either a water wheel or a windmill, that turns and puts kinetic force into this dynamo. We're going to start by placing the water wheel against the dynamo. We can hook up to three of them together, actually, for increased power generation. I've gone ahead and built in this little enclosure around them to make sure that no water spills out, but beyond that, it should be pretty straightforward. Place some water above them so that it starts moving. I'm going to add two more water sources for maximum rotation, and we are now generating power. The next part of this is to actually get the power from this dynamo into something else. In this case, we want to get it into a capacitor. And to do this, we're going to place a wire connector on the kinetic dynamo and another wire connector on the capacitor. To connect these, all we need is some LB wire. And as you can see, we are now generating power. The next step, though, is getting this to actual machine. One thing that we should note, though, is that walking into this wire does damage us. So we need to be careful and we definitely don't want this wire just hanging across our walkway. To avoid this, I'm going to place a wire relay up top there and another one on the other side that I connect with two wires. Then I can get rid of this capacitor here and connect the connector directly to the relay, allowing us to send our power across and down. Now we can set up a system of connections where in each of these little sets of walls that's going to contain a machine, gets its own capacitor all hooked up to this central relay system that goes all the way to our water wheel. 
All that's left now is to make some machines that can actually use this power. Normally, the first machine that we would want to make is this metal press. The metal press allows us to turn ingots into plates, as well as making stuff like gears, wire, and rods. Unfortunately, beyond steel, we're gonna need something called redstone engineering block and heavy engineering block. The redstone engineering block isn't intimidating, it's copper and copper and nickel, pretty cheap. But the heavy engineering block requires these reinforced alloys, which means we're gonna have to get into mechanism. And as we all know, mechanism starts with one main machine, the metallurgic infuser. The recipe here has obviously been tweaked, but it's honestly not too bad. All it takes is a couple of furnaces, some osmium, an external heater, as well as the centerpiece. This steel casing, but with our blast brick, a steel plate, two steel mechanical components, and a metric ton of osmium, we have now unlocked mechanism. The first machine, as I mentioned, is going to be the metallurgic infuser. And I'm going to immediately use the second casing to make an enrichment chamber. I'm not going to go into making the IC2 circuits for it here, but they're really straightforward. It's just iron, redstone, and rubber. I'm going to for now set up our mechanism machines right here, just between these walls. It's obviously not the best place for them, but like I said, we'll fix this soon enough. For now, all that matters is that we can get some power to these guys. And as we can see by the number going up, it's working. And now that the machines are getting electricity, we can put them to use. I went ahead and gave these machines energy upgrades, four each, which were just from a quest reward, so I didn't have to craft them, as well as upgraded this one to the factory version, which allows it to do three crafts at once. Now, here's how we use them. The first step is pretty simple. You're going to want to take redstone or diamond and put it through an enrichment chamber. This is going to give you compressed redstone, the next step is to take this compressed material and put it into the infusing factory. This mechanic is what drives a lot of the mechanism circuits and alloys. You can see all of these up here on the top left. The most basic tier is the enriched alloy, which is a piece of iron infused with redstone. This can then be itself infused with diamond to make a reinforced alloy, which then gets infused with refined obsidian to make the atomic alloy. The mechanism control circuits follow a similar mechanic. In this case, the first step is to infuse osmium, and then use the alloys of each tier to craft the next tier of circuit. So, the next step is going to be for me to just batch a bunch of these because they're going to be used everywhere. Pretty much every single mechanism machine uses these in some capacity. The more we make now, the better off we are. I also forgot to mention this, but the reason why you would want to use the compressed version of the material is because if we look over here, we're currently at 720 redstone. If we add one dust, that gives us 10. If we add the compressed redstone, we've gone up to 810. It gives you eight times as much of this liquid metal, if you will, as the raw material. I've gone ahead and finished crafting a stack of each of the alloys, and all I can say is, man, it is hard not to get distracted. Mechanism as a mod is incredibly useful. We could be making our own solar power, we could be making biofuels, we could be making steel in a totally different way. There's a lot here, so I'm really struggling to stay focused on our two main goals. The first, of course, being that metal press that we wanted from IE, and the second being this lovely green glowing ingot right here. As you might be able to tell, all we're actually missing is one machine, the Osmium Compressor. This is going to require two advanced control circuits, which we can make no problem, and then a few more enriched alloys around that steel casing. This compressor is really simple. It's got two total recipes. And for both of them, the process is the same. You put in either glowstone dust or refined obsidian, and you get their ingot form out of it. With refined obsidian, refined glowstone, and osmium, we can throw them all in the smeltery. Molten Osglow Glass. With our Osglow Glass made, I've gone ahead and prepared everything we need to make our new tools. The first one, unsurprisingly, will be an Osglow Glass pickaxe head. We're then going to make two dark steel tool rods, an Ardite tool binding, an Osglow Glass axe head, and a Cobalt shovel head. Now, if you're wondering why I chose these specific materials, I'll try and give you a super brief rundown. 
The Ardite Binding has good durability and an ability that lets us repair our tool as we mine stone. The Dark Steel Handle has okay stats and the unnatural ability, which means that the tool mines faster if the mining level is higher than what's required. Given that most of what I mine is stone, this is going to increase the speed tremendously. The Oslo Glass tool heads are because they have good attack, good mining speed, high mining level, and crazy high durability. Combining these parts gives us a pickaxe that, by default, has durability twice what our current one has. And the same goes for our new Matic. I've been testing our new pickaxe out down here in the mines, and I gotta say, no complaints from me. Beyond being fast, all it takes to get home is a simple key press. Mining aside though, let's now focus on that metal press. We've crafted everything else that we need, like the scaffolding and the redstone engineering block, so all that we're missing now is the heavy engineering block, which we can make because of our reinforced alloys. I'm also going to preemptively make the plate mold, wire mold, and rod mold. Setting up the metal presses here is going to be pretty straightforward. The immersive engineering manual tells you exactly how to build it, it even gives you a little animation. And once all of the blocks are in place, you can hit it with the engineer's hammer and make your multi-block. And just like that, here are our first three metal presses. Each of these will be given a mold, a hopper, and some chests over here with dropping conveyor belts. All that's left to do now is to hook them up to some power. To test them out, I'm going to give this string one a copper ingot which gets turned into string, and then put into an unopenable chest, exactly as I had planned. This plate press makes us steel plates, and this rod press makes us aluminum rods. I'll have to fix the fact that none of these chests open, but the presses themselves work, and that's what we wanted. And that, I think, is where I'm gonna stop messing with tech for the day. That might have been a lie. It's been so long since I've gotten to play with IE or Mechanism that I just want to do more, so let's do that. Let's go grab some new machines. Now isn't this a bit more like it? I added three new machines and cleaned up the water wheel so that we now have a much, much nicer looking machine room. The first machine here is the crusher. Next to it over here is the industrial squeezer. And over here in the center of it all is the arc furnace, which I gotta say is probably the best looking multi-block out there. It's not really functional at the moment, because most of its recipes require thousands of RF per tick, and we just can't do that right now. But we'll get there. For now, it's just here for the aesthetics. Which is the same reason that I cleaned up all that ugly cobblestone around our water wheels. And now, all that's really left to do is to make the rest of the room just as nice. Now isn't this just way, way better? I went ahead and completed both the first floor and this little second story balcony, and I am loving how this looks. 
I used a lot of similar ideas in these walls as I did in the hallway, but the rest is actually pretty unique. I really wanted to challenge myself to use light sources besides torches or candles, so the entire first floor here is lit up by these immersive engineering floodlights, which I think are really cool and add a lot to the aesthetic. The machines, as you might be able to tell, now all run into the wall, and there's a whole messy circuit behind the scenes as it were, but it's, the important part is it's hidden from view. I think the more unique shape definitely helps make them stand out. And I also added these big windows here on the side, which look out onto this nice lake. It does also show us this ugly pre-generated pyramid here, but we'll get rid of that next episode, don't you worry. There are still some small tweaks that need to be made here, but overall, I love how this came out, and it's making me really excited to build more of these rooms. That, however, is all the time we have for today's episode. If you want to see more building, stay tuned for the next one. Thank you all for watching, and stay cool.